سبحانه وتعالى he says in the Quran النبي أولى بالمؤمنين من أنفسهم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is more dear to the believers than even their own selves. That is to say, the believers prefer the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over their own selves. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu wa jaha. He said, Kana, Kana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ahaqa wa ahaqa imanina min kulli shayhi wa min al-ma' wa min al-ma' al-barid. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was more dear to us than everything, even more so than cold water. And the analogy here, cold water is an analogy for life, for life in the desert era. In other words, the Prophet ﷺ was more dear to the Sahaba and to the believers than life itself. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq he said one day to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, I hope that Abu Talib becomes Muslim over Abu Tuhafa. I hope that Abu Talib, your uncle, the man who raised you, becomes Muslim over Abu Tuhafa. Who is Abu Tuhafa? This is the father of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. I hope that your uncle becomes a Muslim over my uncle. Do you understand the import of this statement? I hope that your uncle goes to Jannah over my father. Because that would make you happy, O Messenger of God. And your happiness is my happiness. When the Sahaba used to laugh, when the Prophet used to laugh, the Sahaba used to laugh. When he used to cry, they used to cry. They were annihilated in the akhlaq, in the adab, in the khulq of the Prophet There's an epidemic going around the Muslim world. Muslims are leaving the religion. A lot of people are becoming Muslim too. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, I've heard up to 20,000 people every year in America become Muslim. But a lot of people are leaving the religion. There's a lot of apostasy. And this isn't just the youth. I mean, al kibar was sihar the old people and the young people, they're leaving their religion. I think part of the reason for this is because we're not experiencing our faith. Right? There's two types of love according to the ulama, muhaddithin, in, in regards to the hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, none of you is a perfect believer until I am beloved to him, that his parents and his children are all of humanity. There's a type of love called the aqli, a love that is based on the rational faculty, that we love the Prophet ﷺ because we know that it's good for us. But then, we're supposed to convert this type of love into a hurt that is based on Iman, which is called Mahabha. We love the Prophet ﷺ because he's worthy to be loved But we need to get there. And how do we get there? There's two ways of getting there according to the ulama. The first way is to have ma'rifa, to know who the Prophet ﷺ is. We have to know about him. And every khutbah I mentioned this, I sound like a broken record, but I think this is extremely important. The people have to read, they study the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. Know the biography of the Prophet ﷺ. We study so many different things, but we don't study the seerah. What are the names of the children? What are the names of his eminent companions? Study the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. Study the, the uh, khasais, the special qualities, the special qualities of the Prophet ﷺ. His distinctions between the messengers. His distinctions between the messengers. Study the, the, the beautiful character, the Shamaya of the Prophet ﷺ, his inward and outward manifestation, so that we can move into Mahabha of the Prophet ﷺ, so we can taste our faith, we can have tahqiq, we can have actualization of our faith. The Sahaba did not leave the religion after they became Muslim. The huruq al the uh, words of apostasy that happened at the Caliphate of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, first of all, there was one Sahaba. Secondly, they didn't leave the religion. It was political treason, it was political apostasy. They did not leave the religion, this is a misnomer. So they experienced the transformative nature of the Muhammadan reality. And this is what we need to sustain our faith, to have the sustainability for our youth and for our older ones as well. That we have to taste our faith, we have to taste the love of the Prophet because he is a sabab, he is a means by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us. And once we taste that, we'll never go back. That's why we have to pray, Ya Muqallib al-Qulub, Ya Muqallib al-Qulub, Thabda Qulub ala ta'adidik, wa ala ta'atik, wa ala hubbik, wa ala hubbi rasulik, wa ala hubbi ahli baytihi, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. These are a few things I mentioned in the other masjid a few weeks ago, because we're studying the seerah. I'm going to mention them again. I think they're very important. First of all, for my own benefit, and then by extension to all of you. When the Prophet وسلم, he entered into Medina al Munawwara during the Hijrah, the women and children came out and they started singing a eulogy about them. The white moon has risen over us. This is how they used to talk about the Prophet. The white moon and its beauty is an analogy for the beautiful face of the Prophet. 
Wallahi Wasallam, Wahu Ajmuru bin Al-Qamar, Laylat Al-Qadr. And he was more beautiful than the full moon, Sallallahu Alaihi Wallahi Wasallam. The white man has risen over us. And we, it's, uh, it's, it's upon us to show shukr. I'm paraphrasing the, the litany, the eulogy. We don't have time to go into it. But one of the things that they said to him about him, sallallahu alayhi wa that we give shukr wajma alayna, that it's, it's wajib alayna to give shukr for this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending us this da'i, this one who calls us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he speaks about his habib, sallallahu alayhi wa quite often he uses indefinite nouns. Nouns are nakira, indefinite. Because this according to Ibn Malik is a form of a superlative. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhal nabi wa inna arsallaka shahidan wa mubashidan wa nadira wa da'iyan ila Allahi bi ibni wa sirajan munira. You are a great warner and someone who gives uh, glad tidings and someone who is a, a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala par excellence and a light or a lamp that illuminates a lamp that spreads light. What happens when you come into the presence of a lamp? You're affected by the light. There was a companion in Hamzala, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who came to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one day. And he said, Asbahtu munafiqa, I've become a munafiq, I've become a hypocrite. And the Sahaba, the sahaba they feared Bifaq. They had tawadur, they had humility. You know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he told Hurdayfa, the names of the Munafiqin, he would write them down. Sayyidina Umar, after the passing of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to come to Hurdayfa and say, Allah, am I a Munafiq? Did the Prophet mention you? Is my name mentioned? He said, no, you're Umar. Of course not, you're not a Munafiq. Allah, did he mention you? This is from the Tawadur of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ijma'in. So he said, I've become a Munafiq. And Abu Bakr said, so why do you say that about yourself? He said, because when I'm in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I feel, I feel a spiritual high. But when I leave his presence, it wanes and it goes away. And he says, I experienced that as well. Abu Bakr as siddiq let's ask the Prophet So the Prophet said, no, you have not become a munafiq. If you were to stay in that state, as you are in my presence, you would be shaking hands with angels in the street, inside of his lights, sallallahu alayhi wa Once you experience that, there's no going back. Your 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 entire being, your ruh has been annihilated in the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The, the Sahaba preferred his life over their life because they loved him more. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came into Medina, uh, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, he took the baggage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam into his own house. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he managed with his baggage. So he went into the house of Abu, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. And Abu Ayyub had a two-story house. And he put the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the ground floor. Because it's easier now to come in and out and people are going to visit him. And then he and his wife were on top in the second floor. And then a few days into the visit, Abu Ayyub said, SubhanAllah, you know we're walking over the head of the Prophet We're walking above his head. This is, this is what's occurring to the Sahaba. This may not even occur to us. Abu Hanifa did not stretch his feet in the direction of his teacher. Did not even stretch his feet in the direction of his house. You know we're walking on top of the head of the Prophet so he came back down and said, Ya Rasulullah, forgive us for our bad adab. We're walking above your head. He said, no, don't worry about these things. It's easier for me. And they would bring food down to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You take him the food, and sometimes he wouldn't eat the whole plate. So Abu Ayyub and his wife, they would try to determine which corner of the plate was the Prophet eating from. Let's eat from that corner. SubhanAllah. This is the love of the Sahaba for Tabarro. Which corner of the plate was he eating from? Let's eat from that corner. Sometimes he didn't touch the food at all. And Abu Ayyub al Ansari, afraid that he had breached Adam with the Prophet وسلم, would come down. Ya Rasulullah, you didn't touch your plate. What did I do? What did my wife do? What happened? Did we offend you? Please forgive us. Please forgive us. You know, when the ayah was revealed in the Surah Al Hujurat, Inna ladina yufduna aswatukum inda Rasulillah, ulaika ladina intahan Allah kulubum bi taqwa, lahum mafiratun wa ajrun azim. Those who lower their voice. In the presence of the Messenger of Allah, they are the ones whose hearts Allah has tested with taqwa. For them is forgiveness and a beautiful reward. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, after this ayah was revealed, he would only speak to the Prophet in a whisper. Only in a whisper. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abu Ayyub said, what did we do? Did we offend you? You didn't touch your plate. The Prophet said, no, there's onions in this. And I conversed with Jibreel alayhi So I can't eat onions. Alayhi salatu wa sallam. Many, many years later, many years later after the passing of the Prophet 
the governor of Medina, Marwan ibn Hakam, who was walking in the, in the road of the Prophet he would become the fourth Umayyad Caliph, Caliph later on. He's walking in the road and he sees an old man seated in front of the grave of the Prophet And the old man's head was touching the stone on top of the grave of the Prophet And he said, he kicked him with his foot. And he said, Do you know what you're doing? And the man looked up, who was it? Abu Ayyub al Ansar. The man who stayed, the, the Prophet stayed in his house for seven months. And he said, Be, re, relax, I visited the Prophet. I don't visit stones. I'm visiting the Prophet. This is the love of the Sahaba. When he came into the city, a rabbi from Bani Qaynuka, Abdullah ibn Salam, he said, when he saw the Prophet sallallahu I can tell from his face it wasn't the face of a liar. Just looking at his face as a transformative experience, that beautiful face that Anas ibn Malik said, that on the day of the passing of the Prophet sallallahu at Salat al-Fajr, we were standing in prayer. They were praying, Yusalluna, they were in prayer, facing south towards the Tibra. The Prophet ﷺ was in the apartment of Aisha on the eastern wall of Kashiva Sitara and he, and he picked up the curtain and as if Malik in his prayer, he turns his face 90 degrees to look into the face of the Prophet ﷺ. Why? He is worshipping the Prophet ﷺ? Hasha lillah. Of course not. Because he understands that the Prophet ﷺ is the great means by which he can even worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the means of the ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Anas ibn Malik said that his face ka'annahu, ka'annahu waraqatu mushaf. His face looked like the page of the Qur'an. What does the page of the Qur'an look like? Beautiful, full of meanings, deep meanings. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa according to Abdullah ibn salam we have to tell people this. Beautiful hadith when he came into Medina. Ya ayyuhal nas, afshu salama, wa at'imu ta'ama, wa sinu l'arhama, wa sallu billayl, wa nasu niyam, tadkhulu jannata bi salata, wa kama qala, alayhi salatu wa salam. He said, oh people, spread peace. Share your food. Maintain ties of kinship. And pray in the night. When other people are sleeping, you enter paradise in peace. And you enter in paradise in peace. One lahda, one moment. One moment with the Prophet ﷺ. This is what we need. This is why people are leaving the religion. They don't have that one moment of love, that one moment of actualization of the love of the Prophet ﷺ, which is truly transformative. The Mushrikeen, they paid Hassan ibn Thabit, their greatest poet. They said, you know, when you see Muhammad, denigrate him in one of your poems, because the Shu'ara were feared. If a poet denigrates you in a poem, it can stay with you for the rest of your life, even after your death and your family for generations. So Hassan ibn Thabit, he took some, a, a small sum of money to do this. He waited by the road. The Prophet sallallahu walks by. He takes one glance into the face of Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One glance and he walks away. He goes back and says, here's your money. I don't want your money. What, you couldn't do a poem? He said, no, I did a poem. Let's hear it. He says, He says, when I saw his lights approaching, his anwar was approaching, I had to put my palm over my eyes. I had to put my palm over my eyes. Out of fear of losing my eyesight, because of the beauty of his form, sallallahu alayhi I can scarcely look at him. A soul from light, a body as if it's carved out of the moon. Like a mantle made up or woven out of brilliant stars. Muhammad al-Bashar wa al-Bashari wa huwa yaqudatun wa nasu al-Hajari. He says, Muhammad sallallahu is a human being, but he's not like other human beings. He's a human being. No one is saying the Prophet is an angel, a demigod, anything like that. He's a Bashar. What is the genius of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Bashar, what is our genius? Bashar. Innama tarinam ana basharu mithnukum. You have a lady. But he's a diamond. A diamond is also a stone. Right? But it's not like other stones. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is a human being, but he's not like other human beings. He is a diamond while everyone else it's like a stone. This is what he said. And the Prophet said, Inna Allah Hassan bin 
He said, indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has aided Hassan with the Holy Spirit when he eulogized the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our mother Aisha said, Kana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yad'u yad'u li Hassan min baran fi masjid. That Hassan had a minbar, a pulpit in the Prophet's mosque where he would eulogize the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. They prefer his life over their own lives. They want to be with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a hadith in Tirbidi on the authority of Anas ibn Malik, who is Khadibu Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the servant of the Messenger of Allah. He served the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 10 years. And the ulama say, after a while, after a while, a man or woman starts to take on the qualities of the meaning of their name. Anas comes from Uns, which means intimacy. This is someone who was very intimate. He loved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas ibn Malik. Anas, the son of a king. The son of a king. is walking around. One hadith says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at night went outside. Anas was following him at night. In the middle of the night. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sees Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. In the middle of the night. Is man cha abik ya Abu Bakr What has brought you out, O Abu Bakr? Listen to the answer of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. He's kharaj to min bayti. Ke andura wajha Rasulullah. I've left my house in hopes of seeing the face of the Prophet In hopes of seeing the face of the Prophet He was in his house. Umru man. His wife said Abu Bakr al-Siddiq in his bed was saying, Wa shawqa. Wa shawqa li Rasulullah. Oh, how longing, how much longing do I have? How much do I long? To see the face of the Prophet This is his best friend, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. So he goes outside in a desperate attempt maybe to run into the Prophet And he sees him, alayhi salatu wa salam. SubhanAllah. Al-wayl al-iman la yarani yawm al The Prophet said, Woe to the one who will not see me on the yawm al-qiyam. And our mother Aisha said, Who is the one who is not going to see you? And he said, Man dhukirtu indahu. The one when I mention in his presence, he doesn't send benedictions upon him. He doesn't say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He doesn't say alayhi salatu wa sallam. We should get in the habit of doing this inshallah ta'ala. That when you hear his name sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, send blessings of peace upon him. This is what it says in the Quran. This is our duty to do this. We want to see him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the yawm al-qiyamah. We want to see him in our dreams. Because if we see him in our dreams, then we've truly seen him. Sayyidina Bilal, he couldn't even survive after the passing of the Prophet He's on his deathbed. His wife is screaming, Wa karaba, wa musibata. Wallahi la karaba. There is no tribulation. Tomorrow I'm going to see my beloved Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Just a moment with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Transform lives. There was a woman, a young woman in Medina, who had a lot of courage. She was very forward. So she came to the Prophet ﷺ one day and the Prophet was sitting on the ground and eating. And she says to him, Sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, give me something to eat. And the Prophet ﷺ, he never refused anyone a request. Ma kana yurutu sa'ilan. He did not say no to anyone. He called the Anas al who served her for 10 years. He never said no to anybody. So he put his hand out with some food. And she said, no, I want you to put the food in my mouth. Put the food in my mouth. The Prophet says, here, I'll put it in your mouth. He says, no, I want the food in your mouth. I want the food that's in your mouth. Put that in my mouth. So the Prophet says, he takes the food out of his mouth and he puts it in her mouth. SubhanAllah. And the food, a little lukuma, a little uh, piece of food, a morsel of food. But mixed with the lukuma is the saliva of the Prophet. And the saliva of the Prophet has healing qualities. You know, in the day of Khaybar, the, the, they were the Sahaba were there for 15 days. They couldn't even penetrate the first fortress of the Bani Israel in Khaybar. So the Prophet sallallahu one night at Salat al-Isha, after Isha, he says, tomorrow I'm going to give the liwa, I'm going to give the battle flag to someone, yuhibbu Allah wa rasulahu, wa yuhibbu Allah wa rasuluhu. Someone who loves Allah and his messenger, and he is beloved by Allah and his messenger. So the next morning after Salat al-Fajr, the Prophet sallallahu he calls for the liwa, he puts it in the ground. And he looks out at the audience, and everyone is clamoring. So he says, Aina Ali, where is Ali? He says, oh, he has, he has ophthalmia, he has an inflammation, Raman, in his eyes. He can barely see. Don't worry about it, I'll take one of them. Take some pigment. 
to so bring Ali, so that they bring him and lead him by the hand to the Prophet to lay down on your back. The Prophet took some of his blessed saliva and started rubbing the eyes of Sayyidina Ali until his eyes were healed. He healed him alayhi salatu wasalam. This is how Isa alayhi salam used to heal. According to the New Testament, according to John chapter 9 in the New Testament, Allah ta'ala alam, Isa alayhi salam. This is one of the reasons why he spoke al Masih. Masih means masaha, to rub or to anoint. Waja'anani mubarakan ayna ma kuntu. Isa alayhi salam is quoted in the Quran. He's made me a person of, of barakah. I have tabarruk. That I can rub someone over the eyes and they can see me. And the Prophet sort of had this quality par excellence. He didn't simply just heal the blind. The man's eye had fallen out of its eye socket and husband. And the Prophet sort of replaced the eye. So he gave this food to this girl. And after this food came into her body, they said that no one in the entire city of Medina was more modest than this woman. No one in the entire city of Medina. She became clothed, enveloped in modesty. Because it was the one Luqman that was given to her by the Prophet ﷺ. There was a man who came to the Prophet ﷺ. who said, Ya Rasulullah, I'll do whatever you say, but I love to fornicate. I can't help myself. I just love to do it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Can you imagine someone doing that with your sister or your mother? I said, yeah, that's terrible. And then the Prophet ﷺ, just for a moment, put his blessed hand on the chest of this man. For one moment, one lahda, one second. This man went out and said, when I entered to see the Prophet I loved fornication more than anything. And when I left, it became the most odious thing to me. The most odious thing to me. Why? Because of one single small transformative experience with the Prophet and you say, well, now with those of the Sahaba, we don't have the Prophet We have the Sunnah. We have, we have the, the Warathat al-Anbiya. We have the Ulama. We have to sit with these people. They're very, very important. We downplay these things. We think, oh, these things are not important to sit with the Ulama. I have the internet. Yes, you can use the internet. That's beautiful. One of the great men of Tasawwuf and one of the great men of Sharia, Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Salam from Ainat, from Tarim in South Yemen, Hadramaut. He said, you know, these city folk come to me and they're full of themselves. You know, like an empty cup, like a full cup. He said, when you come to the ulama, you should empty yourself. Forget about what you know, what you think you know. This is called tachaliya, or kenosis in Greek, via purgativa. Christians have these ideas. That when you come, you sit in the presence of a saint. Forget what you know. Be an empty receptacle and, and take on the lights. So he says, city people come unto me full of themselves. They sit and they sit and they listen to me for hours and hours and they don't benefit anything. And then a Bedouin will come, a simple Bedouin will come, who's emptied himself and he'll accidentally urinate on my thigh. And I give him one other, one glance, and his entire life has changed. We have to sit with these people, sit with these blessed human beings. These are the heirs of the prophets. Seek them out and benefit from them, inshallah ta'ala. In Sahih Muslim, one time Sayyidina Adas relates that the Prophet was giving a khutbah. And a man interrupted the khutbah. Because the Prophet made reference to a sa'ah. The man said, Mata sa'ah, Ya Rasulullah, Mata sa'ah. What is the hour? And the Prophet ignored him for, for then, at that time. And then after the prayer, he turned around and said, Aina sa'ir, where is the one who asked? He said, Ana, Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet said, What did you prepare for the hour? This is what we have to think about. Don't let a death wake you up. Don't let the death of your father when you're 50 years old wake you up. Oh, I should start praying. My father has died. Maybe it's your death and you'll never wake up. Maybe you'll die. The truth of the matter is, one day, here, someone is going to announce your janazah or my janazah. This is the truth of the matter. And it could be any time. What did you prepare for the hour? Don't worry about the time. A lot of people, they try to give you a date. What they say a few years ago, December 21st or something like that. No, nobody knows the date. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. The most important thing is, what did you prepare for? And he said, not much as far as fasting and prayer. And the ulama say that he only did the fara'id. In illa anni uhibbu ba wa rasulullah. But I love Allah and His Messenger. But I love Allah and His Messenger. Anta ma'aman ahbabat. Anta ma'aman ahbabat. You will be with the ones whom you love. You will be with the ones whom you love. And Sayyidina Aina said, we've never been happier 
And when we heard that from the Prophet we have to get to know him. Get to know him, sallallahu alayhi wa Imam Ibrahim al Naqani says in the Johara, he says, absolutely the best of creation is our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi So steer clear of the sin. He is the one, he is the one whose words reverberated in the highest assemblies. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one time was giving a khutbah and a man comes into the masjid and he says, Ya Rasulullah, there is a drought and everything is dying, our animals are dying. The Prophet Sallallahu raised his blessed hands before he dropped his hands. The Sahaba said that his beard was soaking wet with rainwater. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu is the perfected agent of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is the meaning of the Hadith Qudsi according to Abu Qasim and Junaid that my beloved does not, my, my, my uh, servant does not become, my servant does not do anything more beloved to me than his Fara'id. And then he continues to draw near unto me with his extra credit until I love him. And then I become the eye by which he sees, the foot by, the foot by which he walks, and the hand by which he grasps. And if you were to ask anything from me, I shall, I shall surely give it to him. This is Hadith Qudsi in Sahih Bukhari. So the Prophet his speech and his words are guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah and His Messenger are equal in their obedience. This does not mean an essential or ontological equality. We don't believe in that. This is what or Ittihad, you know, Tajaseen, divine incarnation, things like that. With all due respect, that Christian friends, at least the Orthodox tradition, made a major mistake here when they mingled Lahut and Nasut, divinity and humanity. They said they're from the same essence. They have the same essential ontological nature. No, no one is saying that about the Prophet. What the Quran is saying about the Prophet is if we obey the Prophet, we are automatically obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they're equal in their obedience. So then the same man he ran into the masjid one week later. Said, Ya Rasulullah, everything is dying. There's a flood. The Prophet said, Hawalayna wala alina. Around us, not above us. Around us, not above us. His words reverberate in the highest assemblies, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One time he was talking to Jibreel alayhi salam. And he said, you know, he's having a conversation with Jibreel alayhi salam. He said, I haven't eaten in days. My family hasn't eaten in days. And suddenly there was a crash in the heavens. A hadda, a huge crash in the heavens. And the Prophet sallallahu was startled by it. And he said, is it Yom al Qiyamah? Is this the crash? And Jibreel alayhi salam said, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of what you just said, has deployed an angel. From the highest assembly, and the angel came and he landed. And some of the traditions say he was as big as the Kaaba. And he said to the Prophet, do you want to be a servant prophet or a king prophet? Do you want to be a servant prophet or a king prophet? And the Prophet he said, I choose Urbudi. I choose I choose servitude. This is our Prophet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in ma'rifat of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and give us that, that thubut in our hearts with respect to the love of Allah and His Messenger. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. وعلى ساداتنا وإمتنا أبي بكر عمر رحمان وعليه ورضي الله تعالى عن أصحاب رسول الله أجمعين يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليك وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وعلى آل آل إبراهيم في العالم من تحرير المجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إنا نسألك النور وجهك الكريم بحق عليه حسن خاتم عند الممات لنا ولأحبابنا ولجميع المسلمين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما أعطيت وقنا شر ما أعطيت ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وأهدنا لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار لا إله لا إله أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين يا مقلب القلوب الأبصار فقط قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب الأبصار فقط قلوبنا على طاعتك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين